The trailer and campaign mechanics for the Chaos God Zinch have released, but before we talk about it, let's watch it. It is foreseen. Change was inevitable. Masters of manipulation. Orchestrators of grand complexity. The Changer of Ways certainly likes shades of purple. Zinch, the Chaos God of Change, has plans and schemes aplenty in store, and an army that seems to specialize in aerial warfare. So let's play Spot the Unit and then dive into his campaign mechanics. This confirms that Cairo's Fate Weaver is indeed Zinch's legendary lord. And that's a greater demon of Zinch, called a Lord of Change. Those are Heralds of Zinch, possibly a hero unit, Chaos Furies of Zinch, Chaos Champions on Discs of Zinch, Burning Chariots of Zinch, Forsaken of Zinch, Spawn of Zinch, Pink Horrors, Blue Horrors, Iridescent Horrors, Screamers, Pink Flamers, Blue Flamers, and Mounted Cultists dressed up like the Heralds of Zinch with sweet waning crescent moon masks that look kind of awesome. And why didn't I spend more time on that? Well, Zinch will likely get a full roster reveal coming up very soon, with all their details in it, so there's not a lot of point in going over it now when obvious units are still missing. Just know that Zinch seems to specialize in flying units and spellcasters. The real meat is in the reveal of Zinch's campaign mechanics, and the ones we'll discuss here will be available to any and all future Zinch FLC or DLC, and Kairos himself will get a unique mechanic that hasn't been revealed yet. Zinch's unique currency in-game used to fuel his unique style is, fittingly enough, Grimoires. He desires knowledge above all else, and Grimoires represent the forbidden texts, the hidden spellbooks, the banned hentai, the ancient lore and unknown histories that he can't wait to get his sticky hands on. And you'll collect them through battles, buildings, and sacking settlements, dilemmas, and more. And you spend these Grimoires on a whole host of chaotic machinations, used mainly in your Changing of Ways panel. Unique to Zinch, it's a host of campaign map actions that can be used to reshape the world without ever having to step an army onto it. The panel represents a veritable who's who of the best campaign mechanics and actions in Total War games, and guarantees Zinch will be a fan favorite. The length of the cooldown and the cost in grimoires for each of these actions in the Changing of Ways panel is based on how powerful it is. You start off with only one unlocked, and each additional action has an associated technology research requirement that must be met before it's available. And some of these requirements will be fairly deep inside the technology tree, so don't expect them early. The actions are, from cheapest to most expensive I suspect, Transfer Settlement, which transfers control and ownership of one settlement to a new faction, and this can be your faction or another faction. It's Lu Bu's mechanic from Three Kingdoms, except it's global, and you can go with it any way you like. And it's the first one you unlock, and that's nuts. If you have a vassal, you could conceivably use it to reshape your borders and make sure that you get the full region bonuses peaceably. You feel like starting a proxy war? Transfer a region deep in Cathay to the Skaven. It's so bonkers as a concept that I am sure there are limits on it that we just haven't been told yet. Open Gates opens the gates of a major settlement with walls for any battles at that location for the next few turns. Spies have been doing it since medieval Total War, and now you can too with the press of a button. Force Rebellion spawns a rebel army and instant rebellion in a region of your choosing. 
track army, get line of sight for a target army, and see what it sees for a few turns. Reveal faction intentions shows the plans of all armies a target faction controls, which I'll admit to you is really weirdly worded, and it sounds like you'll be able to see the paths an AI army intends to take, meaning the drawn out arrow movements on the map possibly. It's definitely one that's a little more vague, and I don't know how it would work when played against a human opponent. Reveal Shroud. Remove the fog of war covering a target faction's territories. Indulge in your inner voyeur and watch how the hapless mortals dance to your tunes as you peel back the clouds. Halt Faction. All characters, and that does mean armies and heroes both, will have their movement disabled for a turn. It's the backspace exploit from Warhammer 2, except now it's a feature instead of a bug. That's big brain thinking right there. Give war coordination target. It gives a faction of your choosing a war coordination target even if they're not your ally. Normally this is used when you're in a military alliance with someone and you want to have them come and help you attack a target. But here it seems to mean the AI will set a location as their primary target for a few turns regardless if they're your friend or not. Break alliance, used to break both military and defensive alliances between two factions. Sick of order tide? Talk mad shit around the diplomacy table until somebody whips out the book of grudges and breaks up the alliances. And finally, force war which forces two factions to go to war. I mean, there's no word if you need to first break any alliances the two factions may have had before you force them to do this, but as that's also an action, I'm gonna file that under not really a concern. Right, holy hell. You know when you were a kid and wake up on Christmas morning and there'd be extra gifts under the tree you weren't expecting? That's Zinch for me. It's Sal Sal on steroids. He's the Machiavelli of madness. Depending on the cost and cooldown of these actions, you'll be able to complete most of your campaign goals without ever having to personally stab anyone. They basically made Zinch a purple Loki with a bit of Sun Tzu thrown in. The potential for madness and tomfoolery is so high that you can already hear the game breaking under the weight of pressed milk curds. But that's not even all. Zinch can manipulate the winds of magic. Many of his buildings are so tied to magic that when the winds are particularly strong in an area, it increases their capabilities. So Zinch gets the ability to reduce the winds of magic in one settlement and then increase it in another. But this doesn't just buff buildings. It also means Zinch's armies will have extra magic reserves to use in battle. With a number of changes coming to winds of magic, Zinch and his cadre of spellcasters stand to gain tremendously from this ability. The Great Game is the name given to the never-ending contest for supremacy between the gods of chaos. In Warhammer 3, who is ahead in the Great Game is determined by the amount of corruption they've spread. Because besides general corruption, there are now four separate corruptions as well, one for each chaos god. And when a god is in the lead for corruption, it lets you use unholy manifestations, a set of abilities where the more corruption you have, the more you unlock and the more powerful they are. The unholy manifestations for Zinch are Scriveners of Insanity, which is unlocked from the start and allows a friendly army to generate a batch of grimoires over the course of several turns. The army can't move though, and they have to be in enemy territory, so if you're not prepared, they will be sitting ducks. Mutagenic Energies requires 1500 global corruption for Zinch, which I'm now going to call Zeruption because that takes too long to say, and it makes a target army suffer attrition regardless of their situation or natural immunities. Magic Flare requires 3000 global Zinch eruption and increases the range and barrier hit points of all units in an army. By the way, barriers are a special shield that all Zinch units have. Have, which will be detailed further in the roster reveal. See why I'm waiting on that now? Knight of Madness requires 6,000 global zinch eruption, and then you can pick one of your armies to generate corruption and harm public order in whatever province they're in, while also increasing its winds of magic reserves. Although, yet again, it won't be able to move. But in this case, you can make them a very juicy piece of bait if played right, 
As more corruption spreads, passive effects unique to each god will grow in strength, and cults can even form when a god is dominant in a particular region. Cults take the form in this game of hidden building slots in a settlement, similar to the Vampire Coast Coves and Skaven, I would imagine. Zinch can build sanctuaries, which generate grimoires every turn repositories, which make even more grimoires but also require high winds of magic, sanctums, which generate money, and a campus, which destroys the cult but increases winds of magic there and in all adjacent territories. Depending on where you are in the game and what your playstyle is, you can see how these cults can really make a difference. Unique to Zinch and unlocked in his tech tree, is the teleport stance for his armies. It costs winds of magic reserve to do, but allows for the crossing of impassable terrain and instantly triggers an ambush on any enemy target army you happen to be attacking. You only get one shot though, and you have to pay the magic price again if you want to do it on the next turn, which makes it a bit like a super underway stance. Or you know, just an underway stance, but you have to pay for it. So I'll, I'll be curious what the range is on it, as it currently sounds like it may be a bit overpriced. But Zinch's tech tree is more of a tech web spreading out from a point in the center. Each branch is unlocked by a central tech and has a winding path that's barred by prerequisites. While some of the techs unlock abilities for the changer of ways mechanics, others give spells to all your lords of change, making them monstrously powerful magic users. And as knowledge is so important to Zinch, he can even increase the research rate through commandments, buildings, and hero actions. In fact, if you plan ahead, you can sweep through the tech tree and field armies of cheap but devastating units earlier than any other faction in the game. Using the new winds of magic system, new lores of magic, and new corruption mechanic to twist and change your way to victory. Which is just so zinch. So if you're like myself and believe that fights are won on the campaign map, First, then welcome to your new favorite Sun Tzu faction with two dragon bird heads. Because with Zinch, you should never fight a battle that you haven't already won before taking the field. And if this sounds interesting to you, well then you can subscribe for more news about Warhammer 3 as it releases, and I look forward to bringing it to you on this channel in the future. But until then, thanks for watching.